Hi everyone and welcome to Sit in It for a Bit with Arna and Carlos and we are as always your hosts Arna and Carlos and this month we have Sit in It for a Bit on Fridays because we have a special month Yes, it's a cultural month. Yes, September here on our channel is a special month. It's a cultural month. Um, we went down to a, a beautiful valley in the south of Norway called Sattestal um, because it is a very traditional area with a lot of very interesting uh, um, traditions and crafts. Mm -hmm. And we decided to record a 10 part series yeah. where we highlight the crafts of uh, Sattestal. So our series is called uh, Norwegian Craft Traditions. And we are posting uh, new episodes throughout September on Wednesdays and on Sundays. Mm. Um, originally, we thought that we would replace and uh, sit in it for a bit with this series, but we realized that after being away for so long, <laughs> it would have been uh, annoying for people to just see us for two for two weeks and then we disappear. Yeah, so now you get more. So now, exactly, <laughs> you get more. You get more now. You get us on Fridays as well, and uh, we're very excited about our show. And we really uh, hope that you will love it as much as we loved planning it and yeah. recording it. And last year we went to Lofoten, but this year we chose to go to Sattestal in the south of Norway because that's where my one of my grandmothers came from. Yeah, so you have some... So um, we had, I have some roots yes. in Sattestal. Mm. And the, our idea is uh, on Fridays, when we do sit in it for a bit in September, we will be recapping uh, our lives as usual. Yeah. But we will also be talking about the episodes uh, from our series uh, that you have just seen. And keep in mind, this is only September. Uh, once we get to October, we'll go back to our regular schedule where we will be doing Sit In It on Wednesdays and um, our regular tutorials on Sundays. Yeah. So Arna, do you want to tell our viewers a little bit about the premise for the show, the idea that we had for it? Yeah, it was like we wanted to show other people who, who do things. Feature them on our channel. Feature them on the channel instead of us talking all the time, time and doing stuff. Yeah. It's nice to have guests and... Let them shine. Let and them shine and, and then we can also show all you people all the good crafts. And traditions. Around the, and the traditions. So I yeah. think that was the main idea, I guess. And then yeah. it's also because of my grandmother, it was nice to go back and and kind of Look at what kind of environment she grew up in. Yeah, exactly. Because in that area there's a lot of arts and crafts and she also did her, her things. Yeah. So it's kind of going in her footprint. Yeah, the, the, the idea of the show is uh, pretty much we travel to Sattestal and uh, with us we carry, if you saw the first episode uh, which just aired a few days ago, with us we carry the suitcase. And in this suitcase, there are um, several items uh, that Arne recovered uh, from the house before it was burnt down. Yeah. And um, the idea is, you know, to kind of think back, you know, how, how did she grow up? Mm. What was she surrounded by? How did she, um, was she a good craftswoman? Um, and then the idea is to, to meet all these people today that do all these kind of crafts. They're master craftsmen in, you know, they do embroidery, they do knitting, mm. they do silver, they yeah. dye yarn, uh, they weave, and then kind of follow their footsteps mm. and in that way get closer to your grandmother. I think, did I say it right? Yeah. And my grandmother was wearing clothes like this, the folk costume, yeah. and, until she got married. Then she stopped wearing the folk costume and she started to wear normal clothes. Yeah. So we made this book a few years ago with the strict Knit from Sattestal, or is in English it's Norwegian Knit with a Twist. Yeah, so a different title in English. Yeah. And in this book there's a picture of my grandmother, how she looked when she was... I guess this is around the time she married. Yeah. Then she was wearing black. You have to tell everybody her name. Torbjörg. Torbjörg Heistad. Heistad. But when she... Before she married, she looked like... Give me a second. She looked like these people on this picture. Yeah, but anyway, Something I mean, like even if you if you don't show it, people will get to see this, like this. later on. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you will see it later. Yeah. So that's that's fun. It's really fun, and it's, it's it was a really nice time 
for us. Wonderful time. Um, I'm going to go back because yeah. there's so much you can look at. Exactly. And yeah, we spent a year planning this show since we went to Lofoten last year. But last year we did more of a sporadic kind of road trip. We went up there to recover from COVID. Uh, and then we invited pa uh, pa again, PJ, um, Eric and Anna to come um, and then we decided to just film a lot of tutorials while we were up in Setestal, oh sorry, in Lufulten. But this year in Setestal we had a plan. It was, we had a, we went into pre-production as they call it and we kind of did all the research. Um, we kind of narrowed a list down to who we wanted to feature on our channel. Mm. And, um, and it's going to be very exciting. We, without revealing too much, there's going to be um, a lot of masters. Uh, you've got we've got a master weaver uh, experts in uh, folk costume uh, textiles smith. embroidery and knitting yeah, we've a got, lot of different things. yeah we've got a silversmith family that have actually been doing their craft for 300 years um, and a lot of you know beautiful lovely scenery and uh, lots of great people yeah. so, so looking forward to showing you all all the pictures yeah all we the are. nice things from this area and yeah. that's just one area in Norway yeah like another year we can go to another place with a different yeah style, exactly culture. and and that's why we're gonna do this as a hopefully if this series uh, goes well and we get a lot of views and people enjoy it we will ch select a new region next year and then we'll go and we'll record 10 new episodes um, and I think it's gonna be interesting because it's different from yeah. what we've done before we've yeah. always been alone and now we're pretty much giving our platform to all these mm. extremely talented people. And we people. didn't do any tutorials on this trip. No. So that's also cool. Well, but we no. We can do that on Sunday. But we got we but some people in in the show so in these episodes we've got people yeah, they do teaching yeah. us things which is also but nice. We didn't teach. We didn't teach anything yeah, but we, we, we learned we a lot. A lot. So um, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. I I look forward to it. Um, and now you've already seen um, if you already saw the first episode on Wednesday. Uh, it's just an introduction. Yep. It's kind of to show the place where um, where Arne's grandmother's house stood, and to kind of talk a little bit about what people should be expecting in the weeks yep. to come. And I can't wait uh, until we um, we reach episode two, which is. Because it, you know, there's already the cliffhanger. Huh? Yeah. Who is the sweater detective? We, you will find out very, very soon. And I can tell you one thing: you don't want to miss that. I it's think, amazing. But I had this idea. I think the place where that where my grandmother's house stood. I think that place is quite nice. Actually, it's beautiful. So we should buy it. Yeah. And build a house. Yeah. Or build many houses. Yeah. Well, uh, one. No, many old traditional houses with grass on the roof. What do you think about that? Um, I don't know. I think we already own too many houses. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of problems with yeah. the houses we have. So, so maybe, let's, maybe not. We well, can go on a holiday. Before, before we even consider building a new house, let us just recap what has been going on here for the last, uh, yeah, almost four months. Four months. So our fireplace, uh, so there's a... Um, there's a, there was an injury or a, uh, there was some damage done to the foundation of our house because it wasn't properly built. For the fireplace. Yeah, the room with the fireplace. So the fireplace was moving. Yeah. That could be dangerous. And then we called these professionals who said that we couldn't um, light a fire there anymore because no. it was dangerous so. and uh, that we had to rebuild the whole thing. So we had to tear it down and that fireplace is so heavy. It's and yeah, it's made out of a. Uh, uh, it's not a certain stuff. Actually, we we called it limestone, but that's wrong. It's not called limestone. No. We have to do that. We can do a whole sit on it just talking about the fireplace. Yeah. There's a lot of stories. Around you know what? One, okay. Fireplaces. I have an idea. So when the fireplace is finished, we do a sit on it in front of in the fireplace. In the fireplace. In the fireplace. <laughs> and we recap yeah. and we talk about the stone, and everything that has to do with fireplaces. Yeah. That would be a great sit on it. But it's been really hard this summer because. Not, it's like things go, are going so slow and you have to do these things in the summer but then it's they go also on holiday. the time when people go on holiday so everything stops so but I mean optimistic after four months yeah so optimistic Arne and optimistic Carlos we emptied the um, the living room uh, on May 16th and I remember the date because it's it was the day before national. our national day Sutnamai Constitution Day we emptied the living room um, and you know we thought okay tear down 
and build up again. We'll be done by, you know, June, July. Right. We'll be done by, you know, before the guy, uh, the guys go on holiday. Uh, and then, but then we, should, we decided we wanted to have a concrete floor, floor because we don't take any risks anymore. We don't want to have something moving in yeah. the house. So we, we did the concrete floor. But then... And that took forever because like they said, it's 10 centimeters of concrete and they say, one centimeter need yeah. one week to dry, so but that's not, ten weeks. But not only that, I mean, even even uh, chasing after materials, you that's know, hard also. COVID, uh, the COVID pa pandemic has actually made building materials very scarce. So we have uh, or scarce. So we have had to, uh, you know, get on the car in the car and drive all over Norway to just, you know, get building get materials, stuff. and that took time. Yeah. And then, and then, of course, when uh, everything was ready for the fireplace to be built, the fireplace guy uh, went on holiday for three weeks. <laughs> then he came back, and then he said that um, there was an issue with the the wall of the fireplace. It needed it the limestone or or the stone that is not limestone needed to be thicker, seven centimeters yeah. instead of three. Ours were three, so one of them were broken because of the heat. So there's only one place because this particular stone comes from one area in Norway. So there was only one place where we could get it, and they were on holidays. They were on holiday. So we had to wait until they opened uh, up again. So long story short, a lot of summer holidays, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, only only a few days ago was uh, the fireplace ready, but then uh, we had to lay the floor because there's a wooden floor going on. And guess who's going on holiday? The other guy is going on holiday. <laughs> so, but we had it, so we just uh, hired. We had it. We had so we cancelled we him, it. and we hired another guy to do the floor. So hopefully, when Anna, Eric, and PJ come to film here, actually, in a few weeks, yes, we didn't actually cancel. We just said, um, if if you go if on holiday, we, if someone we else find someone who can do this for us in a couple of days. Just forget about it. And if we don't find anyone, then you have to do it. Yeah. And that he was like, okay. So now we've we've got another <laughs> guy coming, and fingers crossed, we'll be able to start moving in the furniture. Maybe in five six days. I Hopefully, hope so. hope so. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. So that yeah. was the the main thing this summer, I guess. And we have been. What more have happened? Well, it's been one of those crazy, crazy summers where we've been really busy with everything, yeah. and um, and it's been so warm. So a lot, yeah. I mean, yeah. A lot of a lot of things have happened. We've already recapped this for you, uh, so we're not going to do it again. But it, we've been really, really busy. We've yeah. been working like crazy all over the place. Um, and then I've been climbing my mountains. Um, Which we did um, last. Yeah. And then we had the drama that I told you about, Mama yeah. Sheep and, and we Baby Lamb. We had another drama just a few days ago. We were yeah. walking in the woods. It was kind of like in the evening. It was um, after dinner. Yeah. And so... And we just walked in this road in the woods. And suddenly there's a big moose jumping out of the forest. and On the road. On the road on the or the path. Us. And he was like, he, and then he ran away from us and he stopped like 20 meters for, for, from us, maybe 30 meters. Well, he jumped into the far. side and into the woods. No, first he, he jumped on the road and ran in front of us. And yeah. he, he stood there just staring at us for a long time and yeah. he didn't move and the dogs didn't bark. I thought that was really strange. Yeah, that was scary. Because they didn't bark at him. And you know, some, you have to be careful when you walk with the dog in the woods if there's moose around because they can attack yeah. the dogs or you. So. But then we started to walk towards him and then he ran inside, in the inside woods. on the other side of the road. But he stopped. And he stopped and we passed by him and we saw this big moose in between the trees, like pine trees and, and the moose and it, it was so cool. And he was staring at us and then I said to Carlos, let me, I, no, I will call him, I will do my uh, moose sound because, and see what happens. So I did the moose sound and he, then he, I saw he just stopped, like he stared at us, and it's, it looked like he was almost on his way coming towards us. Because I know how to call him. I'm the moose whisperer. <laughs> yeah, you are. Right. If I did, if I done it long, many times, he would have come to us. So I had to stop. And you got so scared. Well, yeah, but we started walking again. Yeah, I, and you were scared. Yeah, I was scared. Yeah, and so. Okay, he so didn't come. he didn't come. He didn't come, and we started walking again. And after after a few minutes, uh, the dogs, especially Helmer, he started, you know, like <laughs> smelling like that. There's something here. There's something yeah. here. And then he was he was um, kind of he wanted to go in into the woods, um, 
And when we look up about two meters in front of us, like six feet, there's a baby moose there. He was so in, cute. Yeah, and the baby moose, apparently, it must have just decided that he was going to freeze. Yeah, he's like, if I freeze, they won't see me. So he just stood, he, he just stood completely still for, uh, quite a long time. for quite a long time. Actually, we had time, you had time to give me your phone so I could take a picture yeah, yeah, yeah. of him and everything. And then, then when I just, I took one step towards him and just leaned over to look closer at him, then he, yeah. he ran away. And then I said to Arne, okay, so we've run into two moose, you know, in, 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 in three minutes and I just, um, I'm very concerned now because where baby moose is, mama moose is probably not far mm. away. And this was a little baby. Huh? This was a small This one. is a baby. Born this summer. And I already had my running with mama sheep and baby lamb. So I know how these mothers uh, can be. And you got quite upset because I made that moose sound. Well, yeah, I, sa I said to you... I wanted you, to make it again. And then... then no, 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 like, you did. So we go back. I say to Arna, I'm freaking out. So we, I say, I want to go yeah, home. Yeah, I did it. Yeah, so we turn Sorry. around and we go home. And we start walking home, and then when we come to that place where, where the teenage moose, because I think that other yeah. moose was a teenager. Then I did my moose whispering. He started calling the moose again, and I got really annoyed with him, and I said, "You are freaking me out." And now, if the what if Mama Moose comes and attacks us? You know, I mean, I've already been attacked by a lamb. I don't want to be attacked by a moose. But I've already spotted places you can hide just on that short distance because there was like groups of trees that are growing close to each other, like in a circle. Mm -hmm. I spotted those places. So oh, I yeah. know if the moose comes, you just run. You let the dogs free so they can get away, and then you run in between those oh, trees. Oh, okay. Well, because he can't come in between those trees. So you should have told me this before. He won't bite you. <laughs> no, but he can bump me like the lamb, like the sheep did. Yeah, but if you were in this shelter of trees, oh, but maybe. you have to be quick to get in there. Yeah. Or you have to climb a tree. Yeah. Anyway, Arne, I think we deserve, uh, or our viewers deserve, a little. A little demo demonstration. I don't think I can do that because Come there on. can be a lot of hunters out there, and we're going towards hunting season now. Yeah. And if people learn to call the oh, moose, oh come on, you can do it. They Please. can. They don't need to bring the dog in the woods. They can just make the noise and wait. Please for them. do it once. I mean, we're outside, but I, I don't think we're going to attract any moose today. Okay. Let's hear the the famous Norwegian moose uh, now. This is a Norwegian moose. I don't know what a moose in other countries sound like, but a Norwegian moose. <laughs> Look, is the moose coming? Uh, oh my god, <laughs> you scared me. <laughs> yeah. It works, I know it works. Yeah. Because once when I worked up in the mountains as a milkmaid, one morning there was a moose next to the place where I put the milk in the water to mm. keep it cold. He was standing staring at me and then I I decided to just leave everything and go back to the cottage and pick up my camera yeah. because I wanted to have a close-up picture of the moose and when I came back he was like on his way leaving and then I did the moose that I you do so him. well I yeah. called him yeah. the way I do it so so well and then he came back to me yeah right and he stopped next to the, where I put the milk and I could take a picture of him <laughs> yeah and people say it told me like you're crazy because he could attack you but you're crazy Maybe I'm a little bit crazy. Yeah. So anyway, I think I can run. I can run there. Anyway, quick. now you know what a Norwegian moose sounds like. Can I? Deep, more the oh, tongue down. Sorry. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's a Norwegian moose. So by, I think by, that was the highlight this week. Yeah, and by the way, we put Freya Freya's indoors because uh, we don't want her to get upset. She gets really upset with the moose. Yeah. Although she was surprisingly quiet, wasn't she? She was quite, she didn't bark at all. And then I have to tell this story because, you know, when we were away, one of, on the, one of our trips this summer, we haven't told that, our friends stayed in the house and watched the dogs or take, took care of the dogs. So she, she stayed in the house and she said one evening she heard this very strange noise. She thought it was a, some kids having, or scream, or person or something screaming or someone had problems somewhere. Maybe it was a fox. Room. No, it was these big grey birds. Oh, they, they oh, scream okay. like they're very strange. I think it's called Hailu or something in Norwegian. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sure what, what kind of bird it is, but it said that the reason why this one has this strange voice mm. is that way back in time there was a, a 
very vicious woman who was transformed into this bird oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and now she is trapped in the bird and she can't get out so she's screaming so she she's screaming yeah that's why this bird has this very strange noise yeah so yeah so she was a little bit afraid i think because yeah. she heard that noise we're surrounded by animals here and uh, wild animals so yeah it, get, it can get a little bit um freaky from time to time especially in the evening we haven't seen snakes this year no snakes this year no though. that's good so arna even though we've been really really busy yeah. um and uh, yeah fireplace and we're working on a collection for rowan as well that very um, slow this time. very slow and we started very late but we're gonna you know we're gonna get there yes. i'm sure we're gonna get there but uh we have been doing a lot of knitting this summer after all so there's a lot of ufos a lot, a lot of, of ufos and then we did all the, our christmas knitting that's already done so yeah. um which is good but do you want to show yeah. some this of the ufos and try to finish this this is one of the mittens that has never been finished i have one so this one is finished yeah it's nice i like this one it has it doesn't have the normal ribbing it has what they call a veck yeah so it's just, just a small rib and then you have a like a cuff cuff part yeah this is a traditional so, this is a traditional way of uh, making men's mittens the cuff like that is usually on the men's mitten only not on the woman's yeah. mitten and um, it's from Selbu, the, um, not actually from Selbu exclusively, but that's where they kind of develop the... I think um, Vek is dialect from there, yeah. I guess. Because I don't know what that is called in my dialect. Yeah, so, and you're pretty much a Selbu, even if you don't have an eight-pointed uh, star, you still have you a... You can call that anything you can, a Selbu You can call that a Selbu mitten If it's anyway. knitted this way, you can call it. A, yeah. So, and I think we will probably make something on this one. I, I won't finish this until... Yeah. it comes because to make this is you have to we have some tricks yeah that's because quite... when you do parallel lines like this sometimes you end up with uh, like white it looks like it's white stripes on black or mm. it looks like black stripes on white and then you have a problem with tension so you, you have you try to make parallel lines and i think yeah. i made it pretty good on this one and you've got let me see you've got two I mean, do you two, have? Yeah, you've two got two in the brown and two one in the in one the, uh, and the brown and one in the white. So the so white, the white is uh, uh, half the size of the brown one. Yeah. Um, so there's two two stitches on the brown one. And then I have another. I found, found this. I think this is from the Knit Star collection. Yeah. I finished this one, and this still miss the thumb. So yeah. you have to finish this one. You just have to find the yarn. And there's another one here. Yeah, and I don't know. This is just some leftover yarn. I, I hope I can find the yarn. Yeah. I, I like that co color combination. Yeah, I do too. It's like, like. Uh, but you know what, Arne? And you know what? If you can't find the yarn, you just use another yarn for the thumb. I can do that. That can be like a design yeah. detail if you do it in the in a good way. But that this is like, I don't, oh, I don't know. UFOs. We have so many UFOs. We do, yes. Sometimes it's bother. It bothers me because when I try to clean up stuff, I always find unfinished objects. Yeah. So, but now, I would try to finish some of the mittens. Yeah. So if we just walk into the studio, the first thing we'll see is UFOs, many UFOs, and then the funniest thing of of of, of it all is that. <laughs> We have plans to cast on not one, not two, but three sweaters this fall. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, potentially there's three more UFOs coming. And I got my yarn. Yeah, we mentioned we mentioned Where's last week. Uh, it's in the suitcase. We mentioned last week that um, that we were going to be doing um, some sweaters and sit in it for a bit. I don't know when we'll start because we are so busy. And also, September is a special month full of yeah. full of other interesting things to do. So uh, maybe in October. But we could start showing off our yarn, I guess, and I think you should go first. So you can show your next time? Yeah. So I this have, is open. So I have chosen this color. It's called Peacock. I like that. Like, it's a aqua, turquoise, aquamarine, marine turquoise. kind of thing. So, and it's alpaca classic. And we're going to do, I think you also You're are going to do. do, I'm going to do a brioche sweater knitted in pieces oversized oh a I, because you have a sweater i love mm, that yeah, sweater and i'm gonna use that as a base so i just have to make a swatch and take some measurements and then i will make it based on the one you have yeah 
the one with the kind of it's like oversized on the body but the sleeves are kind of narrow mm. so it looks like it's really nice it yeah. looks oversized but when you put it on it has this nice um, yeah what you call it yeah the drop is it the drops drop is or it nice. kind of it, it kind of drapes it, it drapes, drapes nice. very nicely yeah. on the body and the sleeves are not wide they're yeah. like I like it. So the alpaca classic from Rowan is actually a 57% alpaca, 43% uh, cotton. It's a little bit hairy mm. um, and it's actually done, they, it's used together with needle three and a half. Um, so the knit can be, becomes a little loose yeah. and it's a little hairy. And I think that this is a, actually for brioche and even for ribbing and things like that, I think that this is a perfect yarn. I haven't seen it knitted in brioche, so I'm looking forward to yeah. try. But I have I a feeling. Nice. I have a feeling it's going to be um, uh, with a brioche stitch, and then you have this hairy yarn, which is mm. a little bit thin. Yeah. Um, I think that it's going to be very snug and very snug is yeah, the word. A very comfortable. <laughs> And I think it's going to be a perfect uh, oversized uh, yeah. garment. I have to make a swatch and see because yeah. with the brioche it tends to be a little bit looser. Exactly, so but maybe that work, we have yeah. to go down on the needle. No, or but we can keep it like more. I think that because open, of the hair of hairy. the little hairy yarn, oh, that's, it may be it, it yeah. may be it may work really well with brioche. We're very exciting. Yeah. So um, as soon as Arne does his gauge swatch, we will show you guys how it turned out. And then we'll see what happens. But I think that for you, the, you know, the way you're talking, you want something similar to my sweater. It doesn't have my sweater doesn't have a rib, no, so it doesn't no. go in. No, it, I want to have, make a small rib, and then I take the volume from your. Yeah. I don't want hanging like the same way. Okay. I, will, I want to have a rib. You're gonna have a rib in the bottom. What do you want? Do you know what you're making? I do, but I'm not gonna tell you guys oh. until uh, next week. Um, and actually, um, Arne went with one, so he's doing this beautiful turquoise uh, <laughs> alpaca you're very classic optimistic. yarn. You're optimistic. <laughs> I'll make two. Yeah, and I got I got two <laughs> yarns, um, so I have two different ideas. I see a lot of UFOs coming up. <laughs> well, yeah, especially considering my <laughs> knitting speed, I'm not the fastest knitter in the and world. And then you find something else to do. Yeah. And then you, yeah. Exactly. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we'll reveal more um, in the weeks to come. Maybe I have to help you. We'll see. We'll see. And yeah, and how many balls of yarn do, do you have here? Twenty. Twenty. That should be more than enough. Maybe I think you. It's enough. Maybe you could do a matching hat as well. No, I don't want to have a hat in this one. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Maybe I can do a wig. Yeah. yeah. So and we already that's, know that's the problem. That's the one of the projects. Yeah. And we already know that the the I mean I already know that this color is gonna look really good on Arne because we have it here. Yeah, it looks it's, so good yeah. against that wall. If you can if you can see the the turquoise wall and then you can see Arne. You so, see, yeah. if I go to one of those parties and and no one wants to dance with me, I can be that. They call it the Vegprud. Oh, the wall decoration. I can be the wall decoration because no one wants to dance with me, and if the wall is painted like that. But you're a great dancer. I Why wouldn't still anybody? Look good as a wall paint. Everybody wall. wants to dance with everybody you. Everybody wants to dance with me. You're. I don't great. dance anymore. No. I, I think I, if I should dance. Well, you now, do when we go. I probably out. have the moves from the nineties or something. Yeah, yeah. So do I. <laughs> I. I think no. You have more like the South. Yeah. South American moves. But without the rhythm. The samba and the. Yeah. But I don't have the rhythm. I'm, unfortunately, I'm not you a. You have good. the rhythm. I'm it's a little a... bit late, but it's... <laughs> yeah, but better late than never, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so, you have the rhythm. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Sorry. So anyway, uh, well, yeah, so, so th those are um, those are our exciting projects. Full costume uh, full work costume. We'll, we'll resume as soon as we get our furniture back into the living room. Because the problem now is that it's so dusty. And so crowded. So yeah. there's no space. Everything is crowded so because much. all the furniture are, are spread all over, and it's just really dusty. And uh, my jacket uh, for my full costume is white, so uh, you don't put that out now. Yeah, and your jacket is black, which is actually even worse because it, and it's wool. Yeah. It's kind of like this. It's not felted wool, but it's a very, it's a very nice wool cloth, mm -hmm. um, and it, it will just uh, the whole the the the, the, the dust will just. Uh, kind of immediately suck itself into the, your black Maybe in October. fabric. So we can't, but October for sure. We have to finish those. Yeah. yeah. 
and uh, and we're looking forward to to finishing our full costumes hopefully this christmas we'll be able to wear the whole thing no. Including the jacket shabang, shabang. and the whole, shebang, shebang. The, whole shebang. the whole shebang, and maybe we'll get hats as well. Yeah. The traditional hat of course, for we need our fall costume. But if you are, uh, if you've been following our uh, our folk costume um, process uh, last year, uh, we highly recommend you watch our show, the Norwegian Crafts Tradition. We have a full episode about the traditional folk costumes in Sattestal. Which are still used today. They've been. They have an unbroken tradition of of wearing them for three hundred years. And now I want one of those. And yeah. Because I can. Yeah, but the question is, can we afford it? That's another question. It's probably. We, we, watch and see. Maybe. Yeah. If we learn how to do the embroidery, maybe we yeah, can. It's do one it. of the most expensive of the fall costumes due to all the. Yeah. Silver. They wear a lot of silver uh, jewelry, and there's all the embroidery work. Anyway, you don't want to miss it. We we have um, we brought a, a textile and folk costume expert to talk to us about about the folk costumes, um, and um, and it will give you a little insight as to how it is in Norway because yeah. we all wear them um, nowadays on special occasions. It used to be what people here wore in the past so yeah. and the, i think that the interesting thing about the whole thing is the evolution mm. how it, it evolves from something to to something yeah. done today so and for the if you have family from satisdal or if you have family from other places in norway or if you're a norwegian you of course you have or if you're from another place maybe you have so there's a lot of books you can get because yeah, you every buy, region in norway they have books is yeah, and when we went to Sattestal to film our, our show, uh, Arne bought a lot of books. And now I bought this one. It's from Bygland, where my grandmother came from, and it's farms and families. And this had this three books in this area. Mm. I have two of them now. And in this one, my grandmother and my grandmother's sister is mentioned. Yeah. And my si her sister lived in the house also in the end. She was the last one, I think, who lived in that house mm. that we visited. So this is just gone. This is I would call this I would classify these books in like local history. Yeah. And um, in Norway, there is a lot of local history uh, lodges, if you can call them that, or organizations all over the yeah. country. And so you've got people who who research and then they publish these books. And you can only get them locally. Unfortunately, they're only Norwegian. So um, if you are uh, if you have roots in Norway but come from another country, it may be difficult for you to read them if you don't. Read the uh, speak or read the language, yeah. but for for a lot of Google translating. Yeah, but, <laughs> but for Arne, yeah, but this is a brick of a, yeah. a book. But for, but me, for like, you, it's good. Yeah. Uh, you and, can. And since I I like to write down all the genealogy things, I I go to books because I don't trust all the things you find on the internet because I, actually you can find a lot of mistakes mm. and there's a lot of mistakes out there that you can't fix because. Mm. Like my grandmother's sister, which we talked about a long time ago, who was married to my grandfather's brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he was married to a wrong woman, not not the right woman. According to someone. According to someone made a list. Yeah, on, like on ancestry.com uh, uh, yeah, or something. And it's wrong. Mm. He, he was never married to that woman. So, so these books, are they more reliable? So go, it's, it's nice to look at the books and then you can also go to the digital archive in Norway and yeah. you can click and get everything in English. Then you have the church books. Oh, they have the an same. English uh, yeah, yeah. section. Yeah. Oh, that's good information to have. Yeah. So, so if, you, if, um, you are, uh, if you are interested in genealogy, if you have roots in Norway, uh, would you recommend the digital archives? As I think that's good if you... If, if you want to look for it. Because they, they would have all the church records there now. Most of them, and they're they more coming all the time. So Oh, so it's, it's, ref it's filled up um, yeah. with new... Like now they release new stuff, so I found out when my grandmother and my mm. grandfather on my father's side was married. I didn't know that before, yeah. but now I could find that on the digital archive. And, and I, I, I suppose church records and censuses, they are uh, reliable. They're, I mean, a reliable. church record yeah. would be when somebody was born, yeah. when somebody died, yeah. right? And confirmation. And when they got, or maybe yeah. uh, some registration, whether they got married at that <laughs> church or and something. You can also find out the stuff you might not want to Oh, okay. Know. So, for or example. Things you don't like to know. For example. <laughs> like, <laughs> my, one of my great great grandmother's brothers, he had kids all over. Oh, okay. There's so many, and then with someone, different with different women. Yeah, one with each 
from them. <laughs> okay. But then someone said that sometimes they were not his kids because he he just helped the girls by saying that he was the father. Oh, okay. Oh, so so you don't know for sure. And there were no I don't know how we can do that because mm. there was not no money in that. He just maybe yeah. had to give them money. I don't yeah. very strange. Anyway, if, you, if you're interested, go to the Norwegian Digital Archives. It's Digital Archive. We're going to put a link down in the description here below so that you can uh, find out more about your ancestors. And, and, mm -hmm. and, and I, I guess if you go to the Digital Archives uh, here in Norway, it's actually quite quick. You just punch in someone's name and yeah, yeah. bloop. You Remember get... that lady, a nice lady who came on the cruise with us? Yes, I do. And she had her family from Norway, and I told her about the digital archive. Mm. And then I searched for her, and we found a lot of stories. Mm. And then you could also search on the farms, and you found that in other places. Yeah. And talking about farms and stuff, like in this book, the story in this book, there's, like, there's my grandmother and her siblings, and then there's one, Ragnhild, she died when she was young. Ragnhild was your grandma's sister. My grandmother's sister. So and your great, no, your, she's your great aunt. Great aunt. Yes. And she, the story I was told was that she was with some friends up in in Bigland when she was a little girl, and I don't, she wasn't old. And then they were talking about ghost stories and stuff, and she was so afraid of this. She was so scared when she walked home home at night. And there were two boys, they decided to have some fun with her and they took like a white sheets and they were hiding in the bushes. And when she was walking on the road, they jumped out of the road and scared her. And she was so scared. So she just ran home to her parents, to my great grand, great, great grandparents. And then she started to throw up. There were blood coming and mm. stuff. And she, and then she just, she, they put her in bed. And, and the next morning, my great, great grandmother she was down with by the well washing clothes or a stream or something washing clothes and then well, she was washing clothes for a while then she had to stood up like this she stood up like this and stretched her back and looked up to the mountain and then mm. behind the houses and then she had this wish and she saw a ladder coming down from the sky and in the end of the ladder there was Jesus standing with his arms like this and she saw it on the Climbing the girl the girl was climbing your great mother. aunt and then she ran into my great grand great great grandfather and said I think we are losing Rangnin now because She told him I had this vision mm. So they went to her room and then they found her dead. Oh in the bed. my god That's so sad. that's a sad story, but in this book it says she died of tiring TBC tuberculosis. Yeah Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Which this story. is the less this is the less romantic one here in. Yeah. <laughs> in I the like book. the other one. Yeah. Well, I think I stick with the one where she was scared and she ran home and died from it. Oh my God! Being scared to death like that. Oh, that's but that's so sad. It's sad. It's really how, sad. Was she old? No, how old was she? Wasn't old. She oh, it says it here. It says here she she was um, born in eighteen eighty eight. And died in 1904. Oh, yeah. She was very young. And your grandma? Hmm? Your grandma's there in 1895. Yeah. Married in 1920. Yeah. So she was married in 19. I, I thought she was married around 1920. So married so 1920, and that was the same year your aunt was born. The oldest of the kids. I think I thought that was my aunt. I think it's my one of my uncles. Yeah. Well, so, the, the oldest kid came. So she could year. have been pregnant. They had to marry. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Well, and then, that's another story because. Yeah. And then my she, other grandmother. I guess she had to marry. Yeah. I hang on. Hang on. Hang on. And then she died. <laughs> when did she die? In. It doesn't say. It doesn't say. No. When she died. I don't remember. No, but in that's because 70, no, obviously, 80s. obviously, it doesn't because she moved. Yeah, she moved. She out moved of from this area. Uh, from this area. She went to live somewhere else, and then probably she disappeared from the records. Of yeah, no, then the she's local. in another book. Yeah. Because they moved to another area, and I also have the book from that area. Yeah. And in that book, I can find the story about mm. the farm they bought. Yeah. And my mother's siblings. Which is a sad thing so because if. If you saw the first episode, if you didn't, you have to go see it. We go, we drive up to the to the place where the farm used to be, and and the house is no longer there. Um, it was burnt down because it was in really bad. It was rotten, um, and um, you said to me that probably, uh, probably when your grandmother moved, 
that generation was the last generation to live there. Yeah, her sister, I think, was the last generation. So when they moved out... Yeah, exactly. So when that. Arnis, uh, other, another great aunt, yeah. when she died, um, it was um, left... Because when I went up to the attic, where at the same time as I picked up mm. these pieces, and there was a picture of my mother that yeah. she had sent as a gift to her aunt. Oh, okay. Oh, sweet. So I guess she was the last one. And, and yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. I, I really don't know. I'm just guessing. Yeah. But, but you have to guess. You have to read these books if you want, if you do, if you're into genealogy. Well, but then you have to speak the language yeah. too. Probably. And I also found these books while I was looking. This is like old books with histories from Satterstall, which I, I have to read them now. But I remember we read some of it while we were doing the mm -hmm. book. But this one has like family histories from mm -hmm. Satterstall. So I just have to take out my family tree on that side and yeah. have it next to me when I read the book because maybe I find some familiar names. Yeah. Familiar but unfortunately names. none of these are available in English or other languages mm -hmm. than Norwegian. But and then we have these. Good. These books, um, uh, this is called uh, Gamalt ur Sättestal and uh, this is an interesting story. We, I think we do talk about it. In, I think we mentioned him. A we mentioned it in the episode yeah. with the silversmiths. Yeah. Uh, so we're not going to tell you now, uh, we'll tell you then. But these are stories uh, about Satterstall, and we found a lot of interesting information here when we have done research for There's designs. And, nice. uh, and actually, this book is quoted in the episode where we do the fall costumes, uh, or we talk about the fall costumes. It's quoted twice, yeah. once by Randi, who is the lady that we interviewed, and then once by you. So that's yeah. pretty cool. Um, and look, yeah, the, those are interesting. The, the drawings of the socks. So in this book, you can also find things like this, yeah. which is very interesting. So super, super so, interesting. But I like to collect all these things. Yeah. So I, I have like piles of books from the area my grandfather came from yeah. and my grandmother and then my father's side because they were from the same area. And, and it's interesting. Yeah, and Sattestal, where we have just been and where Arne has his grandmother has, yeah, I mean, Lofoten in the north, where we were last year, has a very big place in my heart and always will have. But mm. Sattestal is also a place we truly love. Um, as, as we said, we did, a, we did a whole book on designs inspired by the classic, uh, the classic iconic Sattestal's Lusikofta, the lice sweater. And now we're talking about lice, the ones that you get in your hair. <laughs> Not because they're in the sweater, but the little dots on that, the dots that Arne is uh, wearing here. They are called lice, uh, as the insects. You can't hold them next to each other like this because then people see have shame. Oh, sorry, we don't want to see that. Okay. That's in a few years. Mm. <laughs> sorry. I look yeah. young on that picture. You do, yeah. Well, so do I. Anyway, anyway, it's a place that we love because of the design, because of the connection, and, and actually going there, we're falling in love also with the beauty of the place. The place yeah. is gorgeous. Nice. And, and the warmth, so nice. yeah, the warmth of the people. Um, is also something uh, special. Okay, it's not, something is happening. Something is happening, yeah. Nice. But I want to I mention that the people that we met and the people that we are featuring on our channel, they are so lovely and warm and they have this pride, yeah. don't you agree? I think, yeah. They have this, they're very proud people because of the, um, of the skills that they kind of, they have received skills uh, which they're taking care of and then hopefully give them to the next generation as well. Yeah. So. It is. Uh, there's a, a continuity there that we that we find uh, that we find is uh, is very special, and that we can't wait for you to see. So we really hope that you will tune in um, every Wednesday and every Sunday for our show. Next time, it's the sweater detective. We left the the introduction episode uh, at a cliffhanger, and next time we go to visit the sweater detective. I don't want to say too much about her, but what I can say is that she has devoted half her life uh, in studying the cultural history of Norway through the traditional Norwegian knitting patterns and knitwear. So learning about the symbology of all of these patterns, what all of them mean, has given her deep knowledge of the cultural history of Norway. So you really don't want to miss that. That's coming up on Sunday. Yeah. And then the week after, we're going to be um, hanging out with Liv at Gome's house, grandmother's house. Gome means grandmother in uh, Sattestal. And we're gonna learn how to dye plants with, uh, dye, sorry, dye yarn with natural plants, which is also 
a tradition. She has deep knowledge in that. So keep so your eyes peeled. Keep your eyes peeled. <laughs> because there's lots of great okay. things coming. No, you shouldn't say more, because then you will spoil the secrets. Well. Or the surprise. Well, we already... Make, make a cliffhanger. Well, we are, well, the sweater detective. There you go. That's, That's the cliffhanger. The cliffhanger. Yeah. And if you guys want to check out the program, we have actually published it. So you can go into our blog at arnecarlos.com or click on the link below. And there you can read the program for September. So for the first time ever, uh, we have a schedule. <laughs> so <laughs> you, can see, you can see which day, which episode is being aired. Um, and you can see uh, what the episode is about, hmm. kind of roughly. And then, you know, just tune in and, and enjoy it. Yeah. But now, Carlos, I think we have to stop because I have some work for you. Oh, yeah. We didn't talk about that, did we? Because you have to fi put this together. Oh, my because God. Because we have this, we have the, the, what you call that? The field of flower. Yeah, we have to cut down a field of flower and we have to use this very dangerous uh, tool. Yo, what's that in English? Scythe, Sky yeah. I think it's called. Because we have, this is the blade. Are you sure? Um... So you have to open this and you have to put it because you're you're like you do these things. You're good at this. Yeah. Are you sure it's safe for me? Will I will I have all my limbs when I finish? I can do the cutting of the grass. Cutting the grass. Then we have to keep the dogs inside. Yeah, yeah. So this is a this is a task that we have to do. We have been working on our field of flowers for uh, a few years now, and you know we want it to look very effortless and very natural. Uh, unlike our garden, which is very designed, but the thing is that it's actually easier. Helmet! Helmet! No, no, come on! Come, come on! He, he likes to lay in one special plant. In the flower it bed. It looks like a bed, like a yeah. bed actually. And then he go, he, he press it down. So, okay, so we are working on the grass, the flowers. And, and keeping a simple uh, flower field looking effortless is everything but that's difficult so now we have to cut all the flowers um, we have to cut it like this with this thing like that yo with a yo scythe <laughs> and then we um, we have to leave the everything we cut we have to leave it there so that the seeds start spreading yep. helmet helmet come on and then we <laughs> have to and then we have to in a couple of weeks we we'll have to to rake everything up and hopefully yeah. uh, there we will leave be it for two weeks yeah. maybe. and then we've got it's some right. seeds that we bought uh, yeah, from our friends from, in England from our friends in English uh, in England sorry it? Well, Charles and Camilla Charlie and Camilla Camilla <laughs> they have these <laughs> lovely packing those seeds with their bare hands yeah probably not <laughs> probably not <laughs> I think they have staff for that <laughs> but yeah we bought some seeds that we're gonna be throwing out so we've got to go and we were supposed to do um, Seven and a half minutes instead of 15 minutes. So it, but it was 10 maybe? I think we've gone way over seven and a way half minutes for minutes. sure. Um, so I think it's time to leave, uh, to do some formalities and to remind you once more to tune in. Uh, you're in for a treat. We hope you're going to love our series. And if you don't tune in, which I seriously hope you do, we will see you again next Friday for a new Sit In It for a bit. But hopefully you'll tune in on, on, on Sunday and then again on Wednesday. Um, but let's do a few formalities. So if you like our episodes, put your thumbs up and remember to subscribe. Because then, if you subscribe and you put on your notifications, you won't miss the episode. Yeah, so and that's uh, very good. And then if you're on the mailing list, you will have news before other people. And sometimes you can get a good yeah. offer. And right now, it's going towards winter. Yeah, you so should be on the mailing list. You should be list. on the mailing list. And remember, the more activity, the more you like the videos, the more you comment the videos, the you know, the more you subscribe to the videos, the more you help us. Uh, because then the more YouTube promotes us, and that's good for us and our channel. We couldn't do this without you. So it's very important that you become active and help us out. Uh, in order to keep the channel going the way it is. So we really appreciate it. And also um, a special announcement is that uh, throughout, um, throughout uh, set, uh, September, during Satastas month, we're gonna be uh, adding a few single downloads to our uh, website yeah. so that you can purchase some of the patterns uh, that are in this book digitally as single downloads. So you don't wanna miss that either. Um, okay, wow. Ooh. No, this is out, this is sharp. Okay, I, I think I think I don't want to touch that. I think that um, 
I think you're gonna do the flower field. I think I'm gonna to go. Figure out how to put it okay, together. let's strike a deal. You do that, and I go in and I vacuum all the floors. And because I don't vacuum. No. Because I know there's something with me and vacuum cleaners because yeah. I, my ears get blocked. So I do that. And then I, I can't hear a thing for okay. a few days. I yeah. don't. I don't vacuum. So Arne, you. Fix this. Here you go. I'm gonna put this here. I and to read the instructions. And I will do the vacuum cleaning and I will vacuum the whole house. And we will see you guys again very soon on Sunday if you want to meet the sweater detective. On Wednesday if you want to be, meet leave, leave and see uh, how she dyes uh, yarn with plants. Or on Friday if you want to see us for a new sit in bit for uh, sit in it for a bit. See what happens after we use this one. Yeah, and uh, please, Arne, don't cut your hands off. <laughs> and don't cut Helmer. <laughs> no, do you have to take him in? I'll take Helmer in. Thank okay, you so much so for watching you. and see you again very, very soon. Bye! Bye.